Like today, I only made like fifteen dollars today. So you imagine taking a taxi um, that's going to cost ten bucks, right? When, uh, after you work here all day, so you know, got your hat, man. So that used to be a stinker having to pay storage there. Here I only pay $10 every time I come out. If I don't come out, I don't have to pay. So you can imagine how much money I get to save, you know? Because sometimes that snow gets real thick and the wind blows. I really don't like to be out here in the wind. So you got a bunch of stuff here, man. How do you decide in the morning, like, what stuff you're gonna put out and what stuff you're gonna leave here? Uh, well, I like to circulate my um, products, <laughs> you know? But you never know. Never know what they'll sell. Back in 2006, I started making this film about a guy I had spent a lot of time with, but barely knew anything about. I was intrigued by Ahmad. In a neighborhood full of rapid changes, stores opening and closing, college students coming and going, Ahmad's table of used books in his chessboard seemed to be the only constant. And everybody seemed to love him. I was also in college at the time, and I was convinced that Ahmad would make a good subject for my first student film. I was just, I'm thinking of chess all the time, and chess boards and all that. But I, I, I think what happened is that I'm just gonna get like right here or something like that. So after doing all of this, I just take a little piece. You know. mm -hmm. What is this right here? Um, this is my bamboo plant. And uh, yeah, is this, this is for sale right here or? Oh yeah, I, I, I try to sell my work, you know, I, when I go out and sell books, sometimes I have um, an easel behind my table and I, I, I set up pictures, my, my paintings, you know. Right. How much are you asking for this one right here? $1,965. Wow. Yeah. What about this one right here? Um, $1,965. Is it the same price for all your paintings? Yes, at this point, yes. <laughs> it seemed to be going pretty good. But then something unexpected happened. Wow. While we were talking, he took out his collection of journals, some of which he said dated as far back as 1991. Would you be able to like maybe pick a random passage and, and read something, or is that? Read <laughs> something. Yeah. It's after six p.m. now. Me think Toya, me want to phone her, me want to mail to her these things. So tired of our separation. Me see the distractions flying with will. Me shall be not here before Toya's birthday. This is why I don't, this, this is why I know this book will take about a year for me. No, it shall take several months to get him ready. Ooh, I, I wanna stop, I don't wanna go on. You gotta stop? Yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna go on. Sorry. Okay. When you 
you talk about a book getting ready. What, what book is that? Well, the book is Hannibal Baca. Um, I wrote and illustrated it. And actually, I finished it in 2002. So it took more than a year. And um, I'm, it's supposed to be published this year. Um, it's now November. I'm still waiting to hear from my um, my publisher. Um, that was the first I'd ever heard about a book that he'd written. I knew he sold books, lots of them. He sold books for a living. But I never knew he tried to write a book himself. So that was 1998. That was almost 10 years ago, huh? Yeah, yeah. It, I take my time in, in, in perfecting my, um, my craft. I'll show you that I have here. Hannibal Baca by Adamir Ahmad was a uniquely handcrafted piece of work, and I had never seen anything like it before. It told the story of a boy who journeys to the solar system and garners various types of knowledge from each one of the planets. I was impressed by Ahmad's artistry and his storytelling, but apparently I wasn't the only one. Even just looking at a color photocopy, which is what he had given me, it was the really handmade artisanal quality of it, just that this was something that he had really labored over and spent a long time on, you know, I'm kind of impressed by um, the way he's done the lettering in it, for instance, he's written out each letter and then he's taken a typed or printed uh, copy of each letter and superimposed it over the letters that he's already written, so it's got this sort of, um, sort of this depth to it, even in the the type, the uh, the images in it particularly, and they're they're just very strong, very unusual, and you know the more time I spent with it, the more convinced I became that it had to get out there into the world. He read it. He came back to me. He said he's going to show it to his colleagues. They all um, decided upon publishing it. This one I know is going to be expensive one way or another because we're going to have to do some kind of reproduction and uh, reproduction, uh, full color reproduction is going to cost us. And um, it's being published. <laughs> no, we're just waiting. Are you growing a little more anxious, like day by day, about your book, or um... no? I'm, 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 I'm a patient man, you know. I uh, I took my time writing it and illustrating it. Um, when I was going to court, I took my time and went to court. Whenever I was um, um, ordered to come to court, I exercised patience. And, certain things are going to happen, and they will, you know, you, 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 you can't rush it. It takes time for certain things to cook. Yes, I, I, I would love to uh, see him walk down the street right now, but...
through the park. I'll be home in 15 minutes. Try again tomorrow. <laughs> What's up with the uh what's up with Hannibal man? I'm still waiting for my publisher to publish it, you know. You you ever read Schopenhauer? No. I, I think he says expect the worst. <laughs> I, it's not like I planned for it, but but it, it seemed to happen very f frequently. She's 108 years old. <laughs> it's beautiful to see her, you know. Today she's a little bit frisky. <laughs> but I guess you gotta be frisky to live to be 108 years old, you know. You know, it's, it's hard to apply a certain aspect of chess to life. Like chess, you can force certain moves to happen, you know. I, I thought writing a book would be forcing something to happen. I'm still waiting for the publisher to actually put it in physical form, you know. It's taking so long. I, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's very disappointing. Um, but, it's, it's, you know, I'm, it, I'm just a participant in the world. I, I, I have to go day by day. And, and, you know, things happen, things don't happen, you know? from a long time ago. Can't come outside every day. Makes no sense. Gotta restock. Let them miss you. You know? You know? And I, I don't really want to be interviewed anymore because I'm, it's an ego thing. It's an ego trip. And, I'm not on no ego trip. I don't give a fuck about anything. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if my book is published or not published. I don't give a fuck about anything. That's that's my whole attitude about this whole fucking shit. About everything. You know, to be quite frank. So then, what do you give a fuck about? I just said nothing. You know, why should I... Hi, I was wondering if um, Mr. Greg Ford was available? Um, he is not. He actually doesn't um, usually come into the office. Uh, can I take a message for him? My, my name is Ian Phillips. Um, I met him um, about six or seven years ago, and I was just calling to see. Um, I just wanted to talk to him about one of the uh, publications um, I think that he was overseeing. Uh, Hannibal Barker, B-A-R-C-A. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Let me, uh, 
uh, it might be, um, it does. Let me uh, take a look at one thing real quick because uh, I might be mistaking it for a different title, but uh, I think it's forthcoming still. Let me see. Is it, the, is it called Seascape? No, it's by, it's called Hannibal Baca. Um, no, I'm actually, I'm not, not familiar with that title. Wow, okay. Um, but what, uh, what was your question? My question about? is, I guess, whether, you know, I see that it's, it's available on the website as kind of an ebook, I guess, uh, so to speak, yeah, but yeah, I was just yeah. wondering if the, if it was ever going to be, uh, you know, published in, 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 uh, you know, in, I guess in, yeah, uh, in, in uh, physical <laughs> yeah. town. Um, all right, let me uh, let me check our inventory real quick and see if it ever has been. Okay. And because uh, I I know right now um, it's not uh, it's not something that's we have on the list is forthcoming or anything like that. So yeah, and it doesn't look like we've ever you know done any physical versions of it in the past. So. Um, yeah, uh, go ahead and, and um, send an email to, to Greg and see if he can follow up with you about it more specifically. Okay, uh, great. Thank you very All much. Right. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. All right, take care. Bye. This is a neighborhood that's constantly in flux, huh? That it is. That it is. So it appears if you have money, you're in flux. But if you don't, then you just sit back and let things happen. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your movements are generally very slow when, when you don't have money. People with money move fast, you know. And you feel stagnant sometimes? When it comes to art. Oh, are you giving an interview? Well, not really. I don't, want, I don't want to be interviewed. Remember you asked me about the word synagogue? Yes, I did, I did, I did. What did I miss you? Are you clean your I gotta know, I gotta do some grocery shopping. Take care, my friend. All right, see, see you again. those little game tactics. All right, man. I'll see you. Okay, Nicholas. Okay, Nicholas. Okay. What's that chair, man? I found this down there. I'll take this home. You didn't find that, man. Yeah, That's man. my chair. So I can sit and roll around the apartment. Man. I hear you, man. Give me a couple of Lucy's, man. That chair is broke, isn't it? No. It works, man. Look. It looks nice. Looks like hardly anyone sat on it. Look at that. Yeah. There's no butt print. I hear you. My goodness, man. You, you all right, man? Where you got four Marlboros? Yes. All right. Magnet, man. Whether, uh, whether, yeah. whether it gets better. All right, have a good one. Well, lately I've just been writing in journals, you know? Pick my brain. Uh, you know, to write stuff off your chest each day. That's, that's. That's some um, relaxing, man. It's like self-therapy without having to pay somebody.
schools and then caress their zones. On more accounts than one, Moby Dick the way with a black of this stealing unawares upon the whale in the fence. Leave it on? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Because I, I'd like to come in to um just whatever chapter is on, I come in and you know. It's my favorite book, man. But still you see his power in his play. That's my my grandmother. I'm gonna be finished soon. That's me. That's my son. That's my grandfather. My God, he looks just like you at that age, man. <laughs> does he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he looks just like me. Chapter 87. The Grand Armada. The long and narrow peninsula. Where did this start? Where does your journey start? As a person. Well, it started when I left home, right? When you leave your mother's house, right? Or you, you left the nest. That's where it all started. And then I went away to college, Rockland Community College. That's when I started leaving the nest. Yeah. And then what happened? What do you mean? Well, we talked about it, man. Like something, something happened to you, and I'm really not sure what. Oh man, I'm really one of you. Oh, I witnessed a crime being committed by somebody. I went to the police station to report it. The police ended up arresting me because the person that uh, was committing the crime was a court officer, and so the police felt that they have to defend him. So I was charged with attempted murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and also resisting arrest. Although I was at the police station trying to give my statement. I mean, I actually wrote down a statement about the, the, the event, and boom, you know, they end up uh, arresting me. and. And uh, I was never arrested in my life, so they let me out on my own recognizance. And so I had to go to court for four years. And that's basically, um, that's what altered certain things that I was doing. You know, certain things that I had planned. You know, so I had to just live and deal with that. I, I, I don't like the system. Um, judicial branches, although I was acquitted, um, records are sealed, um, but you know, to punish someone for four years for something that didn't even have nothing to do with, you, you know, that's, 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 um, that's, you know, a due process was denied. I gave up my apartment. And I was planning to just move to Toronto and pursue uh, my career as an artist. Every two months I had to come back to court. So, you know, that couldn't, that didn't work out, you know. I'm just exercising patience. And during the, the, exercising of patience, sometime you're gonna get um, frustrated, you know, because you're in it. But then you realize you have to be patient. Do you ever think about what your life would have been like if you had it? been in the wrong place at the wrong time if you hadn't seen that crime committed i don't i don't deal with 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 ifs man you know? it's better to say stuff like i say man like oh boy i wish i wish nasa would put my body in space you know i'd like to go to space you know that's that makes sense it, it, could, it could happen you know stuff like that but, but to deal with the impossibility but then again you know i, I don't know man i don't know about what, what will happen in the next hundred years you know, I, I know a, a hundred year from from 1913 is the internet, and a hundred years ago was like industrial revolutions happening, and, and tanks are being made, and, and 
and, and mustard gas and all that, you know, and, and so, you know, a lot of things happen. But, you know, sometimes I just forget, you know, about the time that's going by. I get to think about new books, you know. Since, since my old book, I get to think about new books. Uh, my publisher said my book will be published in actually hard book, you know, a uh, real st material substance that people can actually buy. You know, that'll be that'll be something. But it's been a while, so. I mean, uh, a lot of people can say about things, hey, this is going to happen tomorrow. You know, that doesn't mean it's, it's going to happen. So when it does happen, then I'll talk about it. Yeah, my book deals with... traveling in the dark matters of space without the aid of any sort of man-made craft or suits or anything, you know. Well, it's a, a form of freedom. Uh, that's one of the aspects of the book. Ahmad, we're downstairs. What's the number? No, but I'm... Okay, we're downstairs. So, um... I don't know if I'm... I have to sign a contract today. Yeah, I have it. Hmm. So we'll review, we'll look at it. Yeah, no, that's, we've been working on it, like, every day for, like, a month. Thank Thousands you. of emails, <laughs> and, like, Kyle's been, like, going crazy, like... Lawyer shit on his table. <laughs> yeah, I mean these guys have been tough. They haven't really wanted to give us anything. We had to like. Oh my goodness. A lot of, a lot of negotiations, and a lot of like, a lot, a lot of maneuvering. Wait, did that say C at the back? Yeah. For reprints, the following will occur. For the first 500 books of the print run, the author will receive $200. 50 copies and quarterly I'm, I'm 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 curious after the the um the 500 copies yeah. is made right so if in a case where we don't sell a lot of books then that's fine but in the case we do we do sell a lot of books like our upside is totally protected so if we only sell 500 which I don't see that happening but then the contract will be as is, but if we sell thousands of books, then everything that's gonna be over the 500 is gonna go directly, all the proceeds will go to you. The, um, the copyright paper, do you need that also? We have that, they have it on file oh, with okay. the Library of Congress. Okay. They were able to pull that out. Okay, okay, wow. I basically have to do nothing anymore. Wow. Hold, hold that, hold that. <laughs> I mean, we're really like, 100% confident in the contract and then we'll get the books and then I think once we get our first books and they come to you I think that's when we have our book signing. We invite all the people from the neighborhood. Maybe we can have it where I sell books at. Yeah. But rent rent out this parking spot. Okay. You get it? But can we have like music? I want it to be festive. Can we get a band and make it like a big party? I don't know if we can get a band. I do know some band members, uh, I'm not sure. That would be the best way to like launch it. And I, then... I, I got some jokes. I've been working on some jokes. Okay. Want to hear it? Yeah. I, can I put on my mask while I yeah. tell my joke? Okay. Yeah, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the unappreciated 
<clears throat> comedian. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my first joke is uh, um, the university is expanding. We're, we're sending in the contractors. Okay, okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, what did the comedian say about the comedian that was involved in a fatal accident? That's not funny. <laughs> that's, all, that's the joke. But you see, the joke is that I'm supposed to be booed. Yeah. You know, because these are some horrible jokes. <laughs> I'm supposed to be booed. Uh. Come on, how's your chess game? Um, it's coming along. Yeah? You wanna play one? I met Ahmad in the fall of 2007. I just moved back to New York and moved to the Upper West Side in the neighborhood and I didn't really know anybody or any people or any sort of community so I was walking down the street one day and there was Ahmad playing chess and Ahmad was like my first friend in New York that I had when I moved back and you know when you move to Manhattan especially it's a big city and it's transient people are moving in and out I found this friend that I can always rely on that I knew it was going to be there. We need to do this for Ahmad. And we went down to Ugly Duckling. That was our message. We weren't there to talk about numbers, and we weren't there to talk about this and that. We said we're here to get the book done, and we're gonna—we're not leaving. We're gonna do it with or without you, and we, we would like to do it with you. But if we're not gonna be able to work together, there's a group of people that care about Ahmad a lot that are gonna get this book published. We can see it in spreads, we can, but it won't work in full screen. We're, mm. we're just going to have to do a, a, you know, a straight up PDF, it's just what we've got. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. My goodness. Wow. Peace, peace. Hi, Mark. Patiently, they travel on the dark matter of space, onward towards the recorded planets. He saw stars, planets, and black. I thank you. I thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Wow. I, I'll take the questions now, and if someone wishes. Yes, Russell. So, how do you feel now that it's actually published? What are, you, what are your feelings? You have to understand, they took 12 years. You know, between 12 years, a lot of excitement and feeling and all that is gone. I'm, I'm on other projects now. That was 12 years ago. If they did it 12 years ago, I would be leaping for joy in a second. But uh, I'm on other things. You know, this book's about the future. You know, it's, it's not about the past. I've never seen you wearing a mask. Do you often wear a mask when you tell stories? I was told it, 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 it'll be a, more of a burden to wear a mask than to actually just be, you know, without one. And I, I, I just thought that it would be much better for me. I'd be more able to speak freely, I think. Can you see Lennon? A little. Not Pretty really. cool. All right, let's let him out go because he has to sign a bunch of. He's got to sign a bunch of books. Great job! Congratulations. Thank you.
when I saw you before, I, th I said something about it being expensive to make. And the real challenge for me was that I don't know how to do that graphic imaging stuff. Of course, it would have been better if we could have done it sooner. Uh, but, I but the thing is, you know, for Ugly Duckling, it's... It's whether I could have done it sooner, and I personally couldn't do it sooner. It's regrettable it took that long. Um, but I'm, I'm glad it's out there in the world. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm just really happy for a mod. Thanks for the book. Thank you. It's a nut. There's nothing that's promised to you on this earth, right? So if you get something, you know, if it takes a while, it takes a while. You know, look at it like that. After Ahmad's book got published, I thought that was the end of the story. I moved away from the old neighborhood, and we lost touch for many years. And then a pandemic came, and a lot of people lost touch with each other. New York City remains the national epicenter of the pandemic. And then one day out of the blue, Russell called me and said Ahmad was back outside. <laughs> hey, Mr. B, how you doing, brother? What's up, man? Good to see you, G. I thought it was over already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> when was the last time that you've been out like this with your books and everything? Um, two and a half years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I've just been writing and painting and staying inside, not working as far as far as putting money in my pocket, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> After getting published, it enlightened me more and gave, gave me uh, a push to um, continue to work, you know? Continue to um, believe that my, my, my art is um, not only good for myself, but it's, it's, it's good for the people. You know, in general. Oh, this is this is Yumi. I think you met him uh, um, in uh, um, what is it, 2014. But he's all grown up now. Look, yeah. my gosh. So I, I gotta respect him as a as a grown man now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there go an old friend of mine. I gotta say hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, you don't remember me. I'm sorry. I'll probably be outside more. That that I'm starting to realize that our isolation time is is um, basically over now. Um, we can get, go back to normal normalcy. You know. <laughs> I, I really feel like it's the end of the chapter for me in, 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 in a lot of ways. Where specifically are you? Oh, I'm going to go over the bridge into the, into, um, up the Palisades Parkway in uh, New Jersey. I made the decision, you know, we have three kids. The opportunity to be able to buy your family a home, you know what that means and how excited and proud I am for all the work that we've done. So since 2014, I started what's known as ICN, Impact Coaching Network. Um, almost six, going on six, seven years ago now. And it was the idea of creating communities at schools around the game of chess, creating teams and cultures. And you know, now we're the most competitive program in the United States. Tani Adewumi is just eight years old and only learned to play chess about a year ago. His intellect, his aptitude, his capacity to learn chess is off the charts. Russell Makovsky is Tani's coach at his elementary school, PS116. Every kid uh, yeah. deserves the opportunity to learn chess, and Tani was no different. He wanted to play, and we wanted to have him. You know, when I came here and I played, and we sat across the board, Ahmad gave that to me. He introduced me to that, and now I'm introducing to that 
people. Wait, Look at this. This is it. This was 15 years ago, nearly. Incredible. 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was in 2007. Wow. You know? I owe everything to Ahmad. People always wonder when I say where I got my start, it was right here. I never thought chess would be my life. I came here to work in Wall Street. I came here to make, you know, make my fortunes. Chess is my life. And it's because of Ahmad. And so 15 years later, I came back. It was important before I left the city. I, I came to where it all started for me. And I brought my family so they can see where it all started for their father. And um, this is it. It's, it's, it's wonderful that, uh, you know, we maintain throughout, you know, uh, these seasons. I feel very comfort, comfortable on this block. I think it gives them um, a good feeling to see me. Um, somewhat of a familiarity. Hey, you're a survivor. Give me a pound. Absolutely. <laughs> How much the people um, appreciate and actually give love to me. It's, it's good to feel loved, man. That's the best thing in the world, to feel loved. That's even better than money, man. Don't you want to grow up to be somebody? Of course you do. So do I. Good games, bro. Good games. Oh, you're not, you're not understanding. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Alright, game set match.